okay i think i'm live right if i'm right i'm live uh, so just tell me a hi or something so that i know that i'm live Uh, okay guys uh, i hope i'm live so i'm just going to tell what to do if you have taken a pathology in this academic year and some of you might have joined and some of you might are waiting for the second counseling right so what to concentrate in the first year during a pathology residency is what i'm going to talk here quite a few of you students ask me what to read and how to read so this will be just an overview of what to do and how to read and what to read because as such, it's, it's a very, very complex subject. It's very, very vast. Uh, something which you don't have it in your routine MBBS is you must have not had such knowledge about pathology in your MBBS. You must have read about the pathogenesis. So that's not everything about pathology. The first thing, so I want you to comment here is your learning curve, right? Learning curve is extremely, extremely steep in pathology because what you must have le learned or read about pathology and what you're going to see in microscopy is totally different, right? So if I may know, uh, what college you are in so can you comment so what college you have taken and what uh, which year you are in and so it'll be easy to kick start the discussion with fine okay so what to concentrate in the first in pathology right so we generally you have the three subdivisions there are three subdivisions in pathology one is your hematology cytopathology and histopathology these three are totally different subdivisions uh, in first year of pathology i don't want you to think that i'm going to do hematopathology only in future or cytopathology in future, please don't streamline in the first year itself. You'll have lots of time in the future to decide what you're going to do. So in first year, I want you to make your base strong. So that's very, very important for you to build uh, the diagnostic skills in future in the slides or FNAC or your flow sedimentary or whatever it is, right? So in hematology, I want you to follow this. So in, in Hamat, uh, there is a book called Daisy and Lewis. I'll tell what each book does. And these books are very, very important in the first year of hematology. Generally, there'll be three months posting for hemat, three months posting for cytology and three months posting for histology in most of the colleges. It might differ a little bit compared to different, different colleges, right? So when I say Daisy and Lewis, the book Daisy and Lewis is going to give you almost everything for your, uh, let's say your uh, simple CBC, the basics of it. So what does the CBC machine do? What does an, it, it has even new bar chamber. It has almost every, every technique laid out in a perfect way. Daisy and Lewis will also have information regarding what to do when a machine troubleshoots, what the quality control, what is LJ chart. So all of them is very, very clearly mentioned in Daisy Lewis as a lab hematology book, which I want you to read in the first year. It's a matter of 400, 500 a page book. Uh, that's very, very informative. It gives lots of insights. Daisy and Lewis is one book which might be even useful after you finish your pathology residency. There are lots of information in Daisy and Lewis. Like only one thing which I want to say is, don't uh, read just like that superficially and go. Uh, like your MBBS time, what you must have done, you must have read, written notes, right? If possible, take a little bit of a highlighter, highlight few points here and there, not entirely exhaustively, and take few takeaway messages. If you have one chapter, at least there'll be three, four takeaway messages, which I want you to do in everything what you read, right? That's one. So they see and lose will take care of your microscopy, the initial part. How does the neutrophil look? How does the basophil look? And what are the variations in neutrophil? What are the variations in basophil? Variation in your RBC, variation in platelet, all that will be covered in Daisy Lewis. For initial CBC violation, that's more than enough, right? I don't want you to read diseases from Daisy and Lewis. I'm very, very particular in that. For disease, I have very good books. We have to read from them only, like sickle cell anemia or a thalassemia. I don't want you to read that from Daisy and Lewis. But hemoglobin electrophoresis, how to do, read it from here. HPLC, how to do, read it from here, right? That's a lab hematology, not for pathology. It's just lab. All the techniques will be given here, right? Next big thing in hematology is bone marrow aspiration and biopsy. There's a book called Barbara Bain. So what Barbara Bain deals is initial aspects of the Barbara Bain. Just what is normal bone marrow look like? When do I call a bone marrow adequate? And how do I identify different cells? This alone is enough in the first three months of hematology posting. I don't want you to go and diagnose in hematology. Like you need not diagnose leukemia. You need not stage bone marrow biopsies. No, not required. If you know in first year, Okay, this is how a normal metamyelocyte looks, enough for me. This is how a normal myelocyte looks, enough for me, right? The first few chapters of Barbara Bain about bone marrow examination. See, all these books are available in ebook format. There's a telegram group of mine. You can uh, 
join that as well. I'll also share the books which was available with me. But please read through the first few chapters. Later on is fine with me. All the see if you know the basics, abnormality you can easily do it and you can easily diagnose, right? Next comes to techniques. When I say techniques, uh, during undergraduate time, you must have read about MPOs positive for a blast, right? So you need to know how to do an MPO staining. SBB, you need to know how to do it. PAS, you need to know how to do it. Because when you're stuck in a duty time, and if you see a leukemia, to call it myeloid or lymphoid, this might be required, right? So these are very, very important for you in order to identify few things. So you need to know everything about the techniques, how to start doing it, how to do it, how to interpret it, how to troubleshoot it. Techniques, I would prefer to go with your college manual. Because every college will have a manual. Please, as a senior most technologist, do you have any manual of how to do an MPO? Even starting with Leishman, new methyl blue stain, all of them will have a manual. Take this rocks of it, be thorough in the techniques. I don't want you to go back in the second year to read the techniques again. So techniques is just for your first year only. So do I need to read WHO in the first year? My answer would be no. Because WHO is only for reporting guidelines. WHO tells me, okay, this is the reporting criteria. I have to go and diagnose it. That's all. So I would say reading WHO in the first year might not be required. But if you have any conferences, if you have any uh, tests, upcoming tests for you, yes, you can go and read. If you have any seminars, you can go and read. But in first year, my focus is on lab techniques, your normal bone marrow aspirate, a normal CBC, how to interpret a counter values. That should be more than enough in the first year, right? And in your PTA, PTD, there's a website called as practicalhemostasis.com. It's a very, very good website. If any of you get access to practicalhemostasis.com, it's a free source website, right? Your PT, APDT, thrombin time, D-dimer, fibrinogen, everything regarding hemostasis. How it is done, how to interpret, how to troubleshoot, everything is detailedly given in the website. Please use the website. That's a very, very good source. Because for coagulation, I don't have any standard books. That's a very good source, which will give you all the information required for almost every coagulation studies. Please use that, fine. Okay, these are a few things you want to talk in regards to the hematology, fine. Okay, next, cytology. So in cytology, like I said, uh, the first and the foremost thing for me in cytology is pap smear. In first year, please be thorough in pap smear. How to identify infections? Because pap smear is bread and butter when you come outside as a pathologist. Because almost every lab will have pap smear being done and it's a very normal consumable. So you need to know how to report a pap smear. Elsin, etsin, that's enough. Or infection. These are only three things. But it should be 100% very, like one, the way to be, gain confidence in pap smears, more and more smears you see. Take time. The first few months, don't rush. You will not get a diagnosis once you put a slide inside in the first few months. It will take years to come to that area, right? The first few months go with the normal. These are normal squamous cell looks. We already have read about how a normal squamous cell looks, right? So confirm that. Go with the organisms. Go slowly. Go by 4x, 10x, 40x slowly. But past smear, you should master past smear and the end of three months of cytology posting. That's very, very important. The tiny book of Bethesda for past smear, read them. It's very clearly mentioned what to look and when to look, fine. Right? That's very important. You should know. Hello, Muni. You should know how to interpret pap smear in the first year itself. Don't take it to the second year. In second year, I don't want you to waste time on pap smear. That's more than enough. In first year, that's more than enough for me. Three months is good enough time to master pap smear. You have most of the colleges have good volume of pap smear. So keep seeing every slide what comes to you during the cytology posting. That's more than enough to master pap smear, fine. Then I have two books. See, apart from these two books, I have a, one more book called as COS. Cost cytology. I would prefer to keep cost down the road because cost is a reference book. You cannot read cost. It's a very, very huge voluminous book. I don't want to, that, right? There are two more books here. Like I said, this Pranab Day and Oral's uh, Cytopathology. Both are decent and standard books. Pranab Day is a uh, professor of uh, PJ Shandiga. His book is very, very good. And also is Oral Cytopathology. So I, what I want you to do is go to the library, read both the books. Don't buy any books in first year. Read both the books or get your uh, soft copy of Pranabdi and Oral Setup Dhaji and read both of them. Whatever you are comfortable with, go with that. It's not that Pranabdi is Indian author, it's inferior. They are the very good books, but I want your comfort level. What is comfortable for you, what you're able to retain for a longer time, go with that. Right? Both and if you find any of these good, get a colored Xerox of any of these. These books, I don't want you to read from e-copy. Because Pranab Day or Oral Cytopathology is like bread and butter for almost every FNAC, almost every fluid. So take a Xerox copy, color Xerox copy. You will get the uh, phone number of the color Xerox person from your uh, senior. Buy that. 
Pap Smear also is tiny by, this, by that. Okay? Please don't use ebooks for them because these you are going to use daily. I cannot have ebooks for something which I am going to use daily. Though you are younger generations, I would still believe that when I have a book, I can read, I can underline, I can tell the important points. Right? Any one of these, not both. Don't do over, overdo anything. You will not be able to complete pathology at all. That's one point. Okay, next. So what do we do for histopathology? So histopathology, again, the first year, what you're going to do is three things. One, you have to know how to gross. So what does grossing mean is you must have been in your internship during surgeries, right? They must have removed a uterus for a leomyoma. They must have put in formalin and the formalin comes to the pathologist. The formalin specimen. So how should I cut the uterus? From where all I should take bits? How many bits should I take? All these are done in grossing. Every college will have a manual for grossing. If your college has the manual, use the manual in the college. But at the same time, I want you to remember about CAP protocols and RCPAT guidelines, right? This is hidden, it's called as RCPAT, the Royal College of Pathologists. <clears throat> Again, one is your Europe, one is uh, American. CAP is American, RCPAT is Europe. Uh, I'm okay with anyone. Again, read what is comfortable for you, follow that forever. Because CAP protocols are RCPAT is the one guideline which is used in the private practice outside your college. I cannot tell that in my college they use this method, they use this manual for breast cancer. Because the oncologist in the private will not accept that because everything is based on protocols. So either follow CAP protocols or an RCPAT guidelines for grossing. Because every cancer has one unique thing. How many bits should I take? How many should I use it for uh, IHC? How many should I use it for normal histopathology? Everything is mentioned. Either one of these. Whatever is comfortable with you, please go with that, right? So grossing is one of the important things which I want undergrad or your in your first year to know everything about it every organ i don't mind for lipoma grossing if, if there's no protocols for lipoma also but for breast cancer i need to know larynx your urinary bladder prostate colon stomach lung any major organ once the entire excision comes how am i going to gross that's very very important to know that so please read that in the first year right along with that i want you to read a book called histology for pathologists by stacy mills right it's called as Histology for Pathologists. Sorry, the pathology is hidden there. Fine. That's a very, very important book to read normal. In first year, I don't want you to read abnormal at all. You, your seniors will show you something, but that's fine. They'll show you a few findings. That's okay. I don't want you to read abnormal in the first three months of histopathology. The only thing what I want you to know is know how a normal glia looks from brain, from how a normal toe will look, skin. I need to know everything how normal it looks. If I know normal, the only thing why I am concerned more about normal is in future when you get a biopsy, you can easily say it's abnormal. When you say abnormal, you can easily say it's inflammatory or neoplastic. When you say it's neoplastic, you can easily say benign or malignant. That's enough for me. What type of malignancy, what type of benign doesn't matter most of the time. Because the treatment is either for benign or for malignant. The subtype it's very very micromanagement so that's what expected from you when you come out as a pathologist you should know which is inflammatory which is neoplastic in neoplastic you should not make a gross mistake of benign versus malignant inside malignant if they call it ductal customer grade 2 versus ductal customer grade 3 it's okay it's acceptable there's an error which is acceptable but i should not call it a ductal lobular or a lobular ductal so that's that amount of gross errors you will not make so for that i need this histology if you know normal, everything abnormal you know. From nose, larynx, lungs, your uh, trachea, your esophagus, stomach, each part of small intestine, like everything I want you to know normal, fine. So you know that everything will be sorted, fine. So these are few things you want to talk here regarding what books to follow and what um, where you should concentrate in the first year. Just to recap, to recap, hematology, I want you to look at the normal techniques. CBC, normal peripheral smear interpretation and normal bone marrow. Right of pathology, I want you to finish pap smear in first year and a little bit of pranabde or oral. Histopathology, main thing is grossing. Along with that, I want you to report histology, normal histology from Stacey Mans, right? So if you have any doubts, you can ping here. I'll be available. I'll answer your queries for the next few minutes. Any doubts, whatever comes in your topics here. I will be recording lectures for pathologists, the best residency program soon it might take some time because pathology as i said is very very extensive so i formulated a plan hopefully in the next few months we might have something to read for us for all of us and to practice that as well fine 
pathology is always evolving so every three years or four years almost everything i have to reread so don't worry it's not difficult if i know the normal if i know the base i'm just going to tweak a little bit and get updated on the on the go right and one more thing don't think about neat ss when you enter the first year of pathology but that's one thing which most of students wants to do like let me do dm uh, course i i'm planning for three years down the road no don't please don't do that enjoy your first year complete your second year finish your thesis after third year you can think about neat ss you have good amount of time to do the neat ss and the competition is not hectic if you have clear neat pg neat ss competition is like one tenth or one twentieth of it right so don't worry about that okay any doubts you have you guys can ping me i'll try to answer if possible okay except for munib there's no one person who is uh, everyone is shy is it so don't worry about it we we'll learn more together and hopefully we will cross paths in future and we will uh, diagnose everything with certainty okay thank you munib okay if there are no more no other queries i think i'll call it a day it's just small presentation of what to do in the first year and uh, there'll be a link in the telegram group join that uh, i am bit of free time in the next few months so post diwali we'll try to have lectures on a regular basis for both post graduates as well as undergraduates so let's see if we can learn more together that will be much more comfortable which platform do you think it will be easy for your lectures an academy or youtube for pg lectures see because there are two places where i can take lectures for you if my youtube channel is much comfortable for you i'll go to youtube channel i'll put a series of uh, lectures in a tab called as for pg post graduate so whenever you're free whenever you want to learn something we can definitely learn from that right okay so there are no more queries we'll call it a day and thank you very much for your time hopefully we will uh, learn more together in future right thank you guys thank you bye bye